Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, I have a really cool smartwatch review for you guys. So you're gonna wanna sit back, relax and enjoy this video. So first off, here is the watch itself. This is the box it comes in. And here you can take a look right here. This product is not a medical device. Basically it's for reference only. Uh, they're just covering themselves because I believe this watch has glucose monitoring functionality. So let's go ahead, unbox it here, take a look. And I believe this model is the Fit AOS Max 1. So let's go ahead and take a look. This thing looks super cool already. And right here it says HD large screen, wireless charging and massive dials. So here is the uh, watch itself. Let's go ahead and pull this open. And here we go. Wow, that is uh, quite a big dial. Uh, if I put it next to my Apple Watch Ultra here, which is already a pretty big dial. But anyways, this is just the unboxing portion of the video. Uh, of course, I'm going to use this for a few weeks and mesh that straight into this video. So uh, this is the only video you need to see. Uh, but here we go. We've got a removal tool for the band here, which is actually a very nice material. The metal band is included, so that is great. So when you want to class it up, you can wear that. When you want to go to the gym, you can wear this one. Here we have the pogo pin connector, which is very common amongst these smartwatches. And it looks like we have a couple extra pieces in case we break one. Here is the manual and let's see. Yeah, this is a, okay, this one's just about the ECG. And then this one is the actual quick start guide. There's quite a bit in here. It'll just be a lot easier for me to show you guys on video rather than read all of this. Anyways, that's all that's in the box. Let's move this off to the side and see if we can pair this up. So let's go ahead and peel this off. So now we are presented with the screen. I have no idea what that says, but it says something about a QR and it brought me to this application. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this because I guess that's what you need. Now this does appear to only have 10% battery in it. So I'm gonna have to make this quick. All right, it's asking to use my location. So I am not going to allow that because I never do for these. Uh, but it is for apparently probably the, the exercise functions, but that's asking for notifications. Here is the uh, privacy policy if you want to read that. And that's it. Now, what's great about a lot of these apps is that you can do no account login, which is what I usually do. I guess you got to still agree to that stuff. And now they have a skin tone. Uh, let's just go with this one. And now they need your birthday, some personal information, male, female, stuff like that. So let's just do something similar to this. And let's go to pounds. And of course we want freedom units and let's do something like that and goal setting. Yeah, sure. Now it's going to scan for the watch here. So hopefully it finds it. Let's see, here we go. And I guess that's probably it. Name X100. And that's it, we'll pair it up. And then you can choose your notifications here. So uh, first of all, we do want to allow it to receive those notifications, phone call, SMS, WeChat. You guys can see there's a ton of different ones here. It is synced up and I can always pull down to refresh if I need, but obviously there's nothing new here. Just for the fun of it, I'm gonna enable Snapchat and what else, Telegram, and we'll just leave it right there, maybe SMS, uh, and that's it. For now, I'm going to go ahead and put this on my wrist so you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, and I'm gonna compare it to the Apple Watch a little bit here just for this unboxing portion. Uh, but when you see me again here in this video, I will have used this for a couple weeks most likely. And at that point I will be able to tell you how accurate it is and you know, all the different features. Let's go ahead and put this right through here. There we go. And it's not super tight right now, but wow, look at that screen. That is a vibrant looking screen. That is a big watch face too. Um, definitely. If you're looking for a big dial, this is one to, uh, to get that classic, almost a mix of Rolex and Omega uh, design on the bezel. Uh, let's see what the buttons do here. Okay. Very nice. Very smooth. The screen being so big makes it so easy to kind of like swipe through things. You don't miss any buttons. Like some of the other smartwatches on the market, they're very small screens. This one is big and very bright as well. Let's pull down. Let's see if we can make it even brighter. Yeah, so we can make this even more bright. Wow, that is super bright. Silent mode, all right. But yeah, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead, try this out and uh, I'll be right back in the same video with my thoughts. See you in a minute. So I've been wearing this watch for a little while now and I can tell you this watch exceeded my expectations, especially for the price. So let's quickly talk about it. First of all, you can see how it looks on my wrist. This is how I've been wearing it on my right wrist, uh, my Apple Watch Ultra on my left wrist. So that's kind of how it's been, just to kind of gather a little bit of metrics from both, because I know the Apple Watch is relatively accurate with a lot of things. Now let's take this one off. Now that you guys have seen how it looks, looks really good. It also did come with that metal band like I showed before, but because I had to wear this to sleep and stuff, I wanted to just leave this rubber band on just for comfortability sake. But I think the metal band would look way, way, way better uh, than this one. And this one actually looks really good, but 
metal bands always bring these to the next level but i even had to put the velcro one on this one so i could get some sleep metrics easier so let's do a deep dive of this itself and i'm going to tell you guys this is pretty comfortable for the size of this watch it is very comfortable on wrist did not have any issues there you can see on the bottom here are all the sensors pogo pins everything like that band has held up quite well and i haven't had any real issues there on the side you can see there's a button here there's two more buttons here and then this is where you do your ekg you need to have one finger touching it it's not a button but it's just a contact point uh, so when you're taking the ekg that's how you do it this bezel does not swivel unfortunately that'd be cool if it did now this is the watch face that i chose I think it looks pretty good. Swiping down, we have 87% battery. Now, on average, this thing loses maybe 10% battery overnight or just you know on a day that you're not using it when it's just sitting in standby mode. So be sure to kind of factor that into your uh, battery usage. Now, as far as battery is concerned, I had to charge it every couple days. It wasn't too big of a deal at all. It charges relatively quickly and uh, without much issue. Now let's talk about some of the user interface. If I swipe up, I'll see my notifications, which I obviously just cleared. Uh, and then if I swipe back down all the way, I can get to my quick toggles, which you guys have seen before. If I swipe to the left, I can get this little app drawer. Now this is really cool. And I actually really enjoy using this. So you can quickly, easily get to your flashlight if you need it, just tap on it. Or if you need anything else, music, weather, anything like that, you can get to it right away. I also really like this other watch face. So I'm just going to tap and hold kind of like the Apple watch. I'm going to switch to it. Here it is. Now what's really cool about this watch face is I can just click on one of these, like let's say the timer and I can go straight to the timer or I can click on the alarm over here and go straight to the alarms. Uh, just like that and set as many as i want because yes this does have alarms overall this is just a really cool watch face i was just using the white one for style but this one for usability now if i swipe to the right i've got quick access to my phone information so keypad contacts call history and then if i go to the right again i can see my steps i have not been wearing this watch today if i go to the right again i can see my sleep and if i go to the right one more time i can get my heart rate which actually this graph looks really good when it's full fully filled out uh, after a full day's use ECG, if I wanted to, I could do that right now, but it's going to tell me to put my finger over here, right there, put finger on electrode. So obviously I'm not doing that right now. And if I go over one more time, I'm gonna get to the blood glucose. I can't tell you how accurate this is. I think there was something in the app that said that everything that this shows you is kind of like for informational purposes only, it's not legit. I don't know how it just got blood glucose from that because my hand's not there, but anyways, uh, yeah. Interesting stuff there, blood pressure again. It seemed accurate, like compared to what my unusual blood pressure is. I just don't know how it's getting that because there's no band that puffs up. We've reviewed other watches that have puffer bands that, you know, blow up and they can, you know, supposedly show you your blood pressure. But this one, I don't know how it's getting it. It's it's cool. Blood oxygen. That makes sense. Um, blood composition. This is weird, too. It can tell you like stuff that's in your blood. I don't know how it does that. There's not a lot of information that I could find uh, regarding how the algorithm works there and body composition, like your BMI and stuff like it's crazy. Body temperature. That makes more sense. And then there's weather. So those are the different features. Now, this watch is for someone that wants all of the features. So, you know, the blood glucose, the blood pressure, everything in one and in a small form factor. Again, I can't attest to how accurate any of that is because I don't understand the algorithms. I don't know really what it's doing. I don't know if it's even doing anything real at all. But what I can tell you is that this does deliver notifications. It gives you the time. It lasts, the battery lasts a decent amount of time. The screen looks absolutely awesome. The responsiveness is very good on this watch, but now we have to talk about the app and the application is actually not bad either. So I'm gonna hop into H-Band, which is where it is, and it's going to sync up with my watch here. So we'll just give it a second. It should finally be synced up here. It's at 99%, it's just kind of sitting there. All right, so I haven't worn this watch in a few days because I've been testing other things, but I did wear it quite a few times in a row. Let's see if we can get to some of that. So if I go to, yeah, here we go. So let's just go to the 22nd, confirm it. Uh, so here is the pedometer. Now it does break it down to how many steps you took per 30 minute increment, which is really cool. Uh, so you can see when you're more active, when you're not active, or maybe when you're not wearing the watch, because I did have to take it off a couple times, but I can go through the different days. Let's go to the 23rd, there we go. So yeah, you can see when I went out for my nightly walk, stuff like that, um, and different days. Let's go back here and let's go to sleep data. So let's go to, gosh, when was that that I wore it? I guess 22nd, 23rd. Uh, this was really interesting. So I wear an aura ring pretty much every night. I've tested this, it's very accurate with my sleep metrics. This was relatively close to that. Um, the duration and you know the time that it thought that I went to bed and the time that it thought that I woke up were within like 10 minutes of this aura ring, uh, if not less. And these were all very close too. So I was very surprised with the sleep tracking of this watch because most are not very good. This one was very good. I don't know if it's just anomaly that it was so good, but it seemed so close to this ring that I was very impressed with that. Now heart rate, this was pretty cool too. So if I go back to 
uh, one of the days here that I was wearing it. Uh, let's go to a better day than that. So you can see this graph is actually really detailed and it gives you a lot of good information. And if I scroll down here, you guys can see I was mostly at a quiet heart rate for most of the time that I was wearing it. But what's even cooler is I can literally drill down into heart rate details here and see you know, exactly what was going on at that time. Was I walking? Was I just kind of being sedentary? There's so much data here. And this is logged literally every five minutes. Kind of see when I was doing more versus when I wasn't, uh, when I was maybe out in the yard doing some yard work, stuff like that. Blood pressure. Let's go back to one of the days. Let's see. So this continually takes it throughout the day. You don't have to manually do anything, uh, but it can kind of track your blood pressure. I don't know how accurate it is, but it does seem pretty cool that it's doing it. Uh, it's maybe just a reference, something you can reference and look at. Blood oxygen, let's check that one. Everything's pretty much normal there. Yeah, it does do blood oxygen. What else does it do here? HRV, I don't know how accurate HRV is gonna be. So there is the HRV data. You can take that for what you will. Now for ECG, I think I only did it one or two times, but you can see at the beginning, it was kind of like still trying to figure out what was going on. And then it kind of got the rhythm down a little bit better and basically told me everything's normal, no issues, no myocarditis risk or anything. So. Uh, yeah. Anyways, that's that. Let's go down to body temperature. We'll show you that real quick. I'm showing you guys every single thing that this thing can do. So here we go. But I turned on automatic temperature monitoring and this is what it gave me. I don't know Celsius, but I'm gonna have to change that to Fahrenheit if it's an option. Blood glucose. Again, this is the one that I think a lot of people are going to look for in this watch, but I can't really tell you how accurate it is it's because I don't know the science behind this sensor. I just, I don't know. I, I, there's no information that I saw. So we're just going off of what it looks like blood components so you can see here uric acid profile and then body composition let's go to gosh where did i take that i did take one i don't know why it's not there then we got workouts now i did not allow gps but if i go to bracelet movement i can actually see uh, kind of an average of what it thought i did now i took quite a few of these walks uh, and this is kind of what it spit out as far as calories burned heart rate uh, things like that. So obviously, this is not going to be as accurate if you don't give it GPS information. But uh, again, that's personal preference. Now on the profile side, you guys can see you can edit some of the settings here. You can see the battery, you can change the alarms, and you can also change your message notifications. Whoops, clicked on the wrong thing there. There we go. So you can turn any of these on or off. Sedentary reminder, I turn that off. High heart rate alert, keep that off. Raise to wake is on. Device is on. Dial settings. There's also a find your watch feature. So if I click that, kind of goes nuts on here. Uh, accidentally pressed the button there, but let's do it one more time. And it also gives you a signal right there so it can kind of tell you how close it is or not. So it's got all these different private modes, frequent contact, screen on time, weather setting. I have it set to Celsius, which is not good. I don't know why I didn't change that before. There we go, save it. Oh, it's because it won't let me save that unless I give them GPS. That's stupid, they need to change that. Then if we click on switch setting here, we can see all day oxygen monitoring. You can turn these on or off. HR automatic monitoring, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of different settings here. Shake to take photo, firmware upgrade. It's on the latest version, factory reset and reset. Those are the options there. Then you got your steps goal, your sleep goal, your unit settings here. I'm going to change this. I'm going to try. There we go. Switch that to Fahrenheit. Perfect. Okay. Then app style, default style right there. And then about us and we run. So I think that gave you guys a good overview of this watch. This isn't a crazy budget watch. This thing is still 80 bucks, at least right now at the time of filming. But this is one of the better watches that we have reviewed as far as quality. So I really like the screen on this. I really like the fluidity. I like the way that this watch looks. It just looks premium. It has a nice weight to it. The app is a little more custom than some of the other Chinese watches that we have tried. Uh, overall, I'm just super happy with it. So the step counter was usually a little bit off from the Apple Watch. But when I look at my steps for the day, sometimes it combines, you know, the aura ring and the watch. So I didn't really know which one it was pulling from, but it was usually a little bit higher than what this was reading for whatever reason. The sleep tracking seemed very accurate. Like I said, this is just a very good watch. So if you want to check it out, links to it down below. If you like the video, hit the big thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.